Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another segment of Experts Corner. Today, we have the always amazing Derek Deary joining us once again. Hi, Derek. How are you? I'm great, Tracy. Good to talk to you again. Excellent to have you back on the show. For those of you guys following along with our series with FarmLink, you guys will know Derek is a grain marketing specialist at FarmLink. And today we're going to be chatting about three reasons why there is more to selling grain than just the best price. So Derek, I think everybody knows who you are. So do you want to jump right in? Why don't we just go right in there? And can you explain a little bit more why price isn't the only factor to consider when producers sell their grain. I'm sure there's a lot of people in the audience going, yeah, it is. What are you guys talking about? So I'm excited mm -hmm. to have this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive right in, Tracy. And thank you for having me again today. And I'm really looking forward to discussing this topic with you. And as you said, to we're talking about price. A lot of conversations always talk that always start with price. So um Today, we're going to talk even further about you know, price and how price can be an important factor for producers when deciding to sell their grain. So for your producers listening, uh, to he or she who is making marketing decisions for their, for their farm business, um, let's dive into what it's like for you before you make a sale. And, and I have one question that I would throw out there. So when you are, let's say, triggered by price and price is always in front of us, it's in front of us more in an exceptional form this year due to prices that are often associated with words such as great and exceptional mm -hmm. examples being like $18, $19 new crop canola, $23, $24 old crop canola. And often this can trigger us as producers to, man, this is sounds like an awesome price. Maybe we should sell. So I would like he or she to ask themselves, you know, why am I selling today? And when you ask, why am I selling today? Ask yourself this question. It should uncover the reasons why they're going to make a sale. And perhaps uh, he or she as a producer may not have an answer to the question. And that's totally fine as well. Uh, other than the price seems right, or it's a really good price. And, and this is often the starting point for a lot of producers. We see a price or a price is communicated to us in the marketplace, creates a conversation, and we have to make a decision to sell or not to sell. So I would like your producers to think back to past green marketing decisions and ask how much weight did price carry in those decisions to sell Tracy? So as I, I take this one step further, you know, as producers, and this is happens to me all the time, and this is probably the, when it comes to grain marketing in Western Canada, speaking, you know, from my experience and from uh, my desk as a farmer, we often become way too anchored by a specific price. And this year is such a good example of strong prices, amazing prices. And again, we could say exceptional prices being presented to producers. And most often what happens to me is instinctively, it is very, very difficult to say no when presented these prices, whether it be $23, $24 uh, old crop canola or $18, $19, for example, for new crop canola. And as I've learned moving forward, you know, decisions should be made more on strategy and market analysis as prices most often go higher or lower than any market participant could expect. So with that, the price that may be triggering your decision to sell or not sell today, even though it could be such a good price, every cell in your body is telling you, I got to make this sale today. Instinctively, I, I need to sell it. Take a step back, look at the strategy, look at the market analysis before saying yes to that sale. And this is really where we start to work with producers, develop a strategy rooted in market analysis and, and help them make more impactful green marketing decisions. I love it. And like you said, when those big prices come, why would you stop, right? It's go, go, go. So I wanna dive a little bit deeper into that. And answer the question, get you to answer the question, why is forming a strategy so important when it comes to selling grain? Great question. And strategic decisions, so to answer this question, strategic decisions require planning and preparation. 
And this planning and preparation will take the emotion out of the equation. So first reason is price is just a moment in time. It's not really the full picture. So whether we're talking about $23, $24 old crop canola today, that's a moment in time today. So when applying this to green marking, let's get a little bit, uh, uh, bring out the textbook here, Tracy, and just stick with me. Perfect. It might be a little bit for a bit, but let's flip a few pages and talk about what is price. And Love it. Price, is, price is simply the amount of money that must be paid to acquire a given product. You know, In other words, the product's perceived value and worth. And remember, that's just relative to current circumstances today. So $23, $24 old crop canola, that's relative today. That's not relative to the strategy of tomorrow. Now, if we flip the textbook pages a couple pages further, Tracy, I want to talk about equilibrium price. Okay. And this is really what we what we focus on with our team. An equilibrium price is the price at which supply and demand are equal. So when applying the law of supply and demand to the grain markets, Equilibrium price is often shifting as, you know, as supply and demand, Tracy, is constantly changing. And a good example of this is, you know, the drought in Western Canada of 2021, and which impacted my farm. You know, we harvested six bushel canola and 18 bushel spring wheat, as well as uh, many other farmers were impacted. And it created an equilibrium price shift higher for many Canadian crops. So... With that shift higher, it really just triggers all these conversations, Tracy, as, it, as the price goes higher, do I sell, do I sell? Um, and it's, it's been so significant this year because prices have increased so much. And at Farm Lake, we focus our efforts on these equilibrium price probabilities. And we accomplish this task through market analysis to help create you know, the best strategy for a producer to make smart green marketing decisions. Um, and, and further to that, Trace, you know, one common mistake that we often hear is, you know, commodities maybe should be worth a little bit more because of a higher cost, you know, maybe a higher, higher fertilizer commodity cost. And that's not always necessarily true because we really need to look at the strategy and the supply and demand of, of each crop in isolation. We wish, sure. right? Thanks for sticking with me on that one, Tracy. A little bit textbooky, but when you break it down, uh, that's really the fundamentals of price. I love it. You know what? For a moment there, I felt like I was at the U of M in the big amphitheater learning about egg business 5.0. So that was good. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So mm -hmm. here's a question I have for you. We've chatted about this in previous episodes that the fact is it's not always a one size all one size fits all approach right each producer's situation is unique and obviously so should their grain marketing strategy right do you want to touch on that a little bit yeah for sure so leading into a second reason you know, price often triggers this emotional response rather than a strategic reason. And I've tried to provide a few examples of that, you know, again, just talking about $23, $24 old crop canola and how that triggers every cell in my being at times to maybe dismiss strategy and look at selling just because of that emotional response. Um, so when looking at your own strategy, you really need to consider or I would encourage you to consider, you know, what are your farm constraints and what are your financial goals? And by, you know, by doing that, Tracy, you can kind of figure out um, how price has a different importance to every producer, because every producer has different financial strengths and different experience, different levels of experience and different levels of financial strength. And some have really strong financial hands and these farms you know, they can carry crop till more the end of the marketing year. Uh, they can weather the dips in the market. And, and we like to call that more farms with stronger financial hands and somehow weaker financial hands. And I have weak financial hands for my farm. And many of times we're growing, we're, uh, we're, we're a young farm family. And, and sometimes we need to yeah. be making sales to ensure that our payments are being made. That's a lot of producers, right? I mean, uh, to jump in there, sorry, Derek, really quick. Sure. If somebody has the whole farm paid off, 
there's different financial pressures than young producers like us. I want to say I'm still a young producer, (laughs) younger producers like us, where we're still paying a lot of debt off. So we have different financial pressures, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, carry on. Different experience, you know, different risk tolerance with that as well. So, you know, know, identifying in terms of your farm and and my farm, Tracy, and, and, and taking it further, a smart financial goal for us producers is to, you know, identify what probable equilibrium prices for each crop could occur and then create a strategy that optimizes the execution of those goals. And, and that can be done on the back of an envelope for us. It's done in, in a really, really uh, steady and, and uh, heavy lifting by our analytical team to, to develop a strong market analysis. And this is where we work with farms to help uh, create some probabilities around equilibrium prices, but it, it starts by having a target, Tracy. So you need something to aim towards. And with that, some questions to ask yourself as a producer when highly persuaded by price. So let's say you just listened to uh, uh, this this podcast again, and now your phone is blowing up and it's like, you know, it's $25 a bushel. I got to, I got to sell that. And every cell in my body is telling me I need to sell. Yeah. I need to yeah. uh, ask yourself these questions. You know, if I make a sale today, does the price align with my strategy or am I selling on an impulse? So if you ask yourselves that, and then secondly, more importantly, how much runway is left? And and Tracy, this is where that strong hands and weak financial hands fit into the equation. If we have a lot of runway left on a certain crop, as of today, for example, it's we're we're talking in November, long time until we even plant next year's crop and then harvest it. There's a lot of runway left for the markets to go higher or lower, uh, a lot of time left uh, for us to sell that specific crop. And then lastly, does the price align with my financial goals? You know, you know, perhaps maybe for my farm, I have weak financial hands at this time of year. Uh, the price is going to help me hit my ROI for a financial goal. Um, it's going to help me pay off my debt in time, build my credit rating up. Uh, perhaps I need to follow through with the sale. I love that. Those are some strong questions to remember and just be thinking about, right? What's my intention? And ask yourself those different questions. Perfect. Thank you for sharing those. So we have discussed strategic planning to avoid making decisions based on emotion. So how do I know when is the right time to sell? I am curious, Derek. Excellent. And this leads uh, me to my last reason why price is not the only factor to consider. So when you do sell, regardless of price, then you are selling with confidence. So he or she who is a decision maker for the farm, uh, when you are are making, uh, when you are following through with reasons to sell, confidence and to put yourself in the in the moment or the situation again, as you're listening to this, just imagine your phone going uh, with an incoming message on a price that is really really difficult uh, for you to turn down, a price that's really going to trigger you. In today's market, you don't have to look very very far for that um, to put yourself in that situation. Now, when you're in that situation and you're you're living and you're deciding, oh, it's, I'm so I'm so tempted to sell because of a, a, that that specific price. Uh, your confidence is is really going to start to go down. And when you do follow through with the sale without strategy or without uh, that specific reason, you're not going to feel like you made a very confident sale because you anchored yourself to that said price that was incoming today. Um, and further to that, you know, again, this is how you develop confidence and, and how you develop confidence. You need to know that you're following a strategy that's in alignment with your financial goals. And this is when you know it's the right time to sell. And, and this is what our advisors, that's why they get up out of bed in the morning and really, really put so much passion into working with clients and producers across Western Canada is to, to support them with this. Last point on this, when you're when you're selling with confidence and deciding to sell, 
it's time to sell strategy lines. It's time to make the decision. Um, sometimes it's not all about the cents per bushel. Uh, we really like to consider strategic buyer relationships and make it a goal to strengthen strategic buyer relationships. We do this. We do this in our farm by delivering on time, which can be difficult due to trucks freezing up in the winter and, and weather and such. But we try and deliver on time. We try and deliver what we say we will. Fulfill contracts to the best of our ability. And when you build these strategic buyer relationships, they pay dividends in the in kind of the medium and the long term. Uh, and we want these strategic buyers to be on our side when the ag markets are in a bust, when they're really terribly priced, but also when they are in a boom. And, and, and that's where kind of the, the sense per bushel uh, matter less at times of the year when developing the strategic buyer relationships. Love it. So, you know, you've heard me say this before. Everybody in the audience knows that I'm a big fan of processes and building out your team on the farm. And as we all know, as farmers, we have so many hats that we wear, so many decisions we need to make. You and I have chatted about this before, decision fatigue, right? So you're... Halfway through your day, you've made 100,000 decisions already. That text comes in with that price. If you're making that decision without the strategy, you're just really reacting, right? So I love that. Now, this is where I like to pull in and promote building out our advisor team. So when it comes to answering the question, do I sell or do I wait? How does FarmLink? help producers make that decision. Thank you, Tracy. Today we have we have two customizable solutions and, and one would be our grain marketing advisor uh, team and our grain marketing advisors, uh, they work with producers one-on-one, -on -one, develop that customized strategy and help answer the question, again, should I sell now or, or should I wait, Tracy, regardless of price, uh, proactive grain marketing, you know, sitting down, creating strategy and, and helping producers that way. Our second option is GrainFox and GrainFox is our new grain marketing platform that offers winning up to the minute insights and recommendations for producers that like to take more of uh, the do-it-yourself approach to grain marketing, Tracy, and that's with our GrainFox platform. Excellent. So many in the audience have tuned in to the previous segments. And if they haven't already checked out FarmLink and Grain Fox, how can they learn more about what you guys do and what you have to offer? Thank you. So to start the conversation or try Grain Fox for free, simply visit farmlinksolutions.ca. There is opportunity for producers to sign up for a trial to Grain Fox if they would like to uh, apply our, our analytic and our grain marketing uh, uh, strategy. Uh, they can also connect with an advisor if there's a, there's a simple button to connect and consult there as well. So we'd love to start the conversation with uh, he or she that's listening to this and and wish them all the best in navigating and planning ahead through these, these uh, exciting markets. Amen. Well, Derek, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate our conversations and I really do enjoy them. I think there is a lot of power and potential in getting more and having a team to help with these kinds of decisions. So thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for joining us again, Derek. I really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Take care, Tracy. Thank you. And you in the audience, thank you so much for tuning in again. If you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did, like it, share it, and get it out there so other farmers can hear about the great work that FarmLink is doing to help farmers. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye-bye.